Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! combo tutorial video, and this time I'm going to be showing you another anti-Nibiru combo tutorial for the new Dragoonity support, coming out in the OCG later this month. So there's actually like one or two more cards that that structure deck could have for us that we don't know yet, which could again make these combos like potentially better. Who knows? But what I'm here to show you today is... I already showed you one anti-Nibiru combo utilizing a card people really weren't considering for the deck uh, in like large quantities or like large um, like uh, large like areas of the community weren't really accepting it um, and weren't really thinking about it. Odd Eyes Revolution Dragon, that's a combo that I showed you. That's my favorite anti-Nibiru combo. But what I'm going to be showing you today is another anti-Nibiru slash anti-hand trap combo uh, that does this. <laughs> it makes the best board the deck has at its disposal. Uh, of three negates goliath lechery so no extra deck no spells at all and three hard negation cards right and it makes crystal wings the fifth summon and this time i'm going to be doing it with cards like remus and legatus specifically showing you how those play out into making crystal wing without using your normal summon but then more importantly what you do from there because a lot of people don't seem to understand what you do from there a lot of people don't seem to understand that you need to play double barca for the combo to be really good all these sort of things are the things i'm going to be showing you uh because like uh i thought it was common sense and i thought that it would be like insulting people's intelligence to tell them this is how you play around nibiru with these cards that obviously say make crystal wing without normal summoning but a lot of people just don't seem to understand, and you know what? I get it. I can't expect everyone to understand this card pool as well as I do. That's why I'm making these videos in the first place, so maybe I should just get it through to my thick skull that I should just suck it up and make content regardless of whether I think whether or not I think people need it, right? But anyway, I'm going to be showing you how to do this in this video. Uh, it's a very neat combo, requires double Barca in your extra deck, which people for some reason are cutting that card to one even though it's Soul Charge that you can summon multiple times in a turn. Even if you're not summoning it twice in the same turn, summoning it multiple times in a game is huge, so... Seems like a card that's still a two of, like, because, like, it's infinitely, like, more impactful than a lot of other options. But I digress. That's what I'm gonna be showing you, so I'm gonna be showing you that real quick, but first, if you're new here... Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more, and check the channel if you want to see more Dragoonie content covering the new cards. I've been doing a lot of stuff recently, as well as I cover other decks. And if you like this video, make sure to leave a like down below, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, watch the video first, make sure that I don't answer them for you, and then leave a comment down below. <laughs> right? But anyway, let me show you how to do this combo real quick. Alright, so the combo I'm going to show you is a three card combo, effectively. There's a lot of different variations on how you can do the combo, but what I'm going to be showing you is one of the more simplified ways of understanding its moving parts. Basically, Remus and Legatus, access to both of these cards, these are what allow you to make the Crystal Wing before you normal summon, and then you need to have access to being able to make a play afterwards, so you need some other card that would facilitate such a thing, like Sinidus, or like ducks or whatever like there's honestly a lot of different ways you can get to this this is the most common hand that you tend to play out even though it's always like around a four card hand unless like outside influences like cards of consonants are involved um like funnily enough like a hand of dragon ravine and one of each of your dragoonity tuners like does this combo like a hand of ravine flanks coos and remus because like then you just ravine discard phalanx for legatus then you remus for a second ravine play the second ravine Ravine discard Coos for Ducks, and then you have Legatus Remus, and you can make the Crystal Wing, and then you can normal Ducks, and then go up through the play. Uh, Cards of Constance help support Ducks lines a bit better, uh, but usually you're going through Sinidus routes, simply because of what you need to be able to make the full combo happen. But so this is the easiest way for me to show you, like, three specific cards uh, that could be like any one of variable three ofs, and then just a random card you have to discard for Ravine to make like the Sinidus or the Legatus like be a card that's in your hand, right? But so for this, you Remus for Dragon Ravine. Dragon Ravine, discard a random card if that's what you're discarding to add a Phalanx to your hand in this instance. Um, yeah, like just adding Phalanx is better if you don't have access to it and you're going a Sinidus route. Uh, but like if you opened with Coos and you're having to add Sinidus, then you can obviously modify the combo a little bit. Um, and it will affect a little bit of the ending board, but I mean, it's still a fantastic combo. But so from here, we have Ravine, so we'll special the Legatus, and because we now control the Legatus, we will special summon the Remus, and that allows us to go into a Gaederg without normal summoning, and then we get to use Gaederg's effect to use its effect to add Baby Rock, discard Baby Rock, and then Baby Rock gets special summoned, and then you just get to sync up into Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon right here and now. 
So like, this is our fifth summon. This is anti-Nibiru, this is like a Nibiru proof combo. We have not normal summoned, and that's what makes this combo a bit different from the previous one that I posted. Previous combo, you had to commit to the normal summon of ducks, uh, and then you had the uh, Revolution Dragon that was making your play continue to go onward. This one's a bit different, and that's why it yields you the uh, better ending board as well. Like, the better ending board of three negates plus Goliath Lechery um, is something that this combo yields you because you're normal summoning and, like, using a powerful normal summon like Sinidus, like, after you've made the Crystal Wing. But so now, to continue on from here, we already have the Gator in circulation, so we get to go a different route. And so, because this is effectively like a three and a half to four card combo, uh, that's very consistent to get to because it requires, you know, any variation of multiple three ofs, you're capable of uh, getting the extra negate out of it. Whereas the Ducks combo didn't get to three negates Goliath Letry, it just got to two negates Goliath Letry, whereas this gets to the full three in most of its instances. But so, you'll normal summon the Senatus using your normal summon, and in this instance, I'm going to discard the Phalanx and equip Coos from deck. You're always going to equip Coos uh, if you're summoning Ducks, if you have two tuners in Grave, or if you're um, summoning Senatus and discarding a Coos, you're still going to equip another Coos, uh, specifically because you need to summon Coos, and you're going to Synchro into Barka. Dragoody Knight, Barka. Uh, Barka is essential as a two-of for this combo, uh, and it's what makes it work very, very well. Now, can you get away with doing this combo without making two Barkas? Of course you can, but it makes the combo significantly worse. It makes the combo like worse than the three card variants of anti-Nibiru combos, and since this is effectively a four card variant, even though, like I said, super consistent to get to, um, like it just makes no sense. You have open slots in the extra deck uh, for super powerful cards like Barka. Like, Barka is a card that's like so powerful that if I say you need to play two of it for certain combos, especially combos as like pretty much cookie cutter is this one i think that it's worthwhile to play uh but so from here you get to special summon both tuners and then you get to link two into romulus and so that's why the bark is important there like you could easily have just made romulus with senatus plus whatever tuner you summoned uh but then your romulus would be getting tributed for the mistleton whereas when you're making barka you're ending with an extra thing on the board that that can be tributed for mistleton uh meaning that the romulus stays meaning that you're not losing extenders into the combo but so Romulus gets to add Dragoonity Glow here. You get to use Glow to add Mistleton from your deck to your hand. And then you tribute the Coos, or whatever Dragoonity you left over. It actually doesn't matter which one you zoom link off into Coos, or into uh, Romulus, to uh, special the Mistleton. Because basically, like, this follows the basic procedure of the uh, combos I outlined in the Dragoonity Glow Changes Everything combo. Of, like, your combos get better if you're able to keep Romulus on the board and make a Tum. Um because you're not losing extenders into it. But so, Mistleton is going to equip Gaederg on summon, and then you get to use the glow effect in Grave, banishing it to special summon the Gaederg, and then we get to use Gaederg's effect to add Zephyros and discard Zephyros, and now we get to go into the Atum. So, overlay these two into our favorite rank 6 boy. This is literally my favorite rank 6 Xyz in the game. Uh, and Atum, detach the Mistleton specifically to get Leviton from deck, and then Leviton effect is going to equip Kus again so then we'll special coos and so now we're basically you know at a point that you should be familiar with we're going to uh, bounce the uh Leviton for zephyros and this is why we play double barca because two barca is necessary for this combo because why soul charge once from your extra deck when you could soul charge twice from your extra deck right coos and zephyros into the second copy of dragoon Knight barca and then this barca gets to equip coos phalanx and mistleton or the first copy of Barca. Truly doesn't matter which one you uh, you equip. It just matters that you equip it. But so you're equipping two tuners and a card that gets to stay equipped to the Barca. Right? And so now from here, special summon the Coos. Link the Coos off into Guard Dragon Pisty. And then you get to link the Atum and the Romulus away. Because we never lost the Romulus into the combo. Into Triple Burst Blast Dragon. Now we get to go Pisty for Gaederg again. And then we get to go Gaederg Effect, add a Morphage Lechery from deck to hand, and then discard the Leviton. And then we get to Special Phalanx, and we get to uh, start climbing up into stuff. We get to link these two into literally one of my favorite links, <laughs> Darkness Metal, the Dragon of Dark Steel. Like, this is literally just a staple in every Dragoonity combo at this point, as far as I'm concerned. Like, it's so good and it's so good at clearing the board efficiently as well to like make sure your combo has enough room to like continue onward it's actually just so nice but anyway so what we're gonna do is we're gonna synchro 
the uh, Phalanx and the Gator go away into Borload Savage Dragon. And Borload Savage Dragon is going to use its effect to equip Triple Burst and get its three counters. And now from here, we get to banish the Barka that is equipped with the first copy of Barka in this instance to special summon the Leviton from Grave. Leviton's effect will equip Phalanx, special Phalanx, and then we'll link the Phalanx away into Guard Dragon Pisty. And then we get to use the Darkness Metal Link's effect, using its effect to bring back either Coos or Phalanx. It does not matter. Uh, Phalanx has a little bit less value in the grave because at this point, the only thing in your extra deck is uh, copies of a Reed Bear um, and uh, Ascalon specifically. And like Coos is a lot better uh, tailored towards going into Ascalon uh, because like you can do that with Mistleton, whereas you can't do that with Phalanx uh, in Mistleton. Uh, but so, just Darkness Metal for the Phalanx is honestly probably the best option. The Phalanx goes to the bottom of your deck when you Synchro with it and the Leviton into Dragoon Knight or Reed Bear. And then, so you've got your three negates, you get to scale the Lechery, you get to go LP effect for a Morphage Goliath, and that's the combo. You played around Nibiru, making the Crystal Wings your fifth summon, and you got to do this entire board. Literally the best ending board that this version of the deck can produce. Three negations, three hard negation cards, Goliath at full strength, your opponent can't summon from the extra deck, Lechery, your opponent cannot Dark Ruler, cannot Forbidden Droplets, no power spells, none of that stuff. Um, so, like, it's pretty, pretty good. Now, what changes if you don't play the second Barka? Uh, you do not get to the uh, entire board of uh, the extra, like, negate. Um, you end up with, like, Leviton left over because you end up losing the Romulus because you have to tribute it for Mistleton because you don't have the extra card out on the board. Uh, and so, because you do that, you lose the Romulus as a card to facilitate Guard Dragon Arrows. So you have to invest more into that later. And so you only are able to get to like the Borload Savage Dragon. Uh, so like this is the best combo that the deck can perform in terms of like what you can do when you're locked to dragons, which both Remus and Senatus lock you to. Uh, and like I said, there's so many different ways that you can perform this combo. This so combo is so consistent, despite the fact that it is a three pseudo four card combo, because like the deck can literally open three copies of Dragon Ravine and any tuner. And that's this combo. Like, it's actually, like, ridiculous. Um, there's so many cards in this deck that are not only three ofs, more than three ofs, that, like, facilitate this combo. You just need to open, like, any three of them. You have to be able to get to Remus, Legatus, and a card that's normal summonable, like, Senatus or Ducks, and, like, have that be impactful. And Ducks is, you know, capable of doing this. Like I said, uh, if you open, like, a lot of the tuners, you're able to discard those for Dragon Ravines or Cards of Constances and get yourself to Ducks, thus making Ducks the card you summon instead of Senatus. Ducks equipping Coos for Barca to, you know, equip two tuners. Um, it's, like, completely possible. But so, this is the combo that, like, cements double Barca as, like, mandatory in the extra deck in my mind. Um, there's another combo that you can do double Barca with, but also, like, Barca is just a really good follow-up as well. Uh, so it just, like, really depends. Um, people who are asking for deck lists are basically wasting their time. Because I'm not going to post a deck list until I have these cards closer to being in my hands. Because literally the format is what dictates the deck that gets built. We don't have a format for that. <laughs> I'm not going to waste my time figuring out the ins and outs of the deck list and what I want to do with the deck list. When by the time these cards come out, which we don't even know when they're coming out, I'm expecting April of next year. Uh, we could just be in a completely different format where completely different fundamentals go into the way the game is played. Uh, and like completely different fundamentals go into what makes a board good, right? So like even the combos could change, but the combos are at least it, st it shows you the fundamentals of the play lines you should be going down and what you should be doing. So these are at least still valuable, but a deck list that I could give you right now, literally the least valuable thing that I could give you would be a deck list because it holds exactly no weight. Whereas these, these hold weight because we could just adjust these slightly. Whereas a deck list, when a format has a major shift, the deck list is completely washed. There's, like, nothing that carries over except for the cards you already knew you were going to play anyway, right? But anyway, so that's it for this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. As always, if you like this video, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more. And if you're new here, I'd love to welcome you on board. Like the video, leave a comment down below, like I said. And other than that, as always, thanks for watching. As always, thanks for your time as usual, guys. And take care. I will see you in the next video.